God and welcome you to the worship service here at Greater St. Paul Baptist Church, 896 South Adams Avenue in the Queen City of the Washita, Camden, Arkansas. Come on now and join us as we go into the worship service. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. God word for God people. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, we bow at this time to say thank you. Thank you for your many wonderful blessings. Lord God, we pray a special prayer for the overall family. Let us take care. church be a lighthouse on the hill. That's the truth. Lord God, we thank you for our church. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for our pastor, wife, and family. Thank you. We thank you for all the goodness that's here all the days. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bless you. Thank you, Brother Deacons, for the devotion. Thank God for everybody here. We want to pause this morning to share a few announcements, and then we will turn you into the hands or put you in the hands of our music ministry. I want to, first of all, uh, ask your prayers and your support for the Owens family uh, during their hours of bereavement. Uh, Brother Owens, Deacon Owens, will be memorialized here uh, in the sanctuary on Tuesday. Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. And then there will be a final committal service in Dallas uh, on Thursday afternoon. I ask that you pray mightily for that family and all the families in our church who are dealing with bereavement, sickness, and other inconveniences. We are asking you this morning to, while we grieve with those who grieve, pray for those who are sick. We also celebrate the blessings of God, uh, this time by way of Reverend Manley's 90th birthday celebration. Amen. Reverend Manley will celebrate his 90th birthday uh, this evening at Shiloh, 6 o'clock p.m. And they're asking all that will come on by and say hello, say happy birthday uh, to Reverend Manley on his 90th birthday celebration. One more quick announcement and then our music ministry. I'm sure that you have been watching the news and seeing the rise in the numbers of those who are infected uh, with the COVID virus. There's this new variant and I am reading um, that it is extremely dangerous. As a matter of fact, I read an article last night uh, that indicated that there are no uh, physical symptoms. There's no fever. No body aches, no cough, no chills, none of that. Uh, and per people can be sick with the virus and then all of a sudden uh, be find themselves in ICU on respirators. Let's pray mightily, but let's also be very wise. Jesus taught us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Let's be careful with this virus and um, let us continue to wear masks, keep our social distance, keep sanitizer close by if you can. Uh, if you don't have any and you need to step out, we're gonna make sure that we have some in the vestibule so that you can wash your hands off periodically. Let's be careful with this virus and trust God. He's gonna bring us through, but we have to do our part. Uh, there will be another giving of the, sh the shots here on the campus on August the 14th. Uh, but by all means, if you have an opportunity to be vaccinated and you haven't been, you have an opportunity before the end, I urge you to go ahead and get that vaccination. I think it is our greatest defense against something that it can be so devastating uh, to so many. So these are announcements. We pray that you will hear and govern yourselves according to the announcements. Let's now make ready to worship and receive um, what God has in store for us 
by way of this wonderful music ministry as they come would you give them a great big god bless you come on put your hands together amen let them know you love them god bless you
to just ask we're just gonna ask everything that is going on around us we're still trying to grab hold to it it may not be easy but all he wants to do is hear our worship all he wants to see is us trying through these hard times and you may be having good times but that is a great time also to raise praise and worship his name so we're going to ask, if you just feel like it, standing to your feet, we're going to make one big choir. One big choir, we're going to worship his name together. Song says, to God be the glory, to God be the glory.
God bless you. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's celebrate this music ministry. God bless you. Thank you so much for the song service. Amen. Thank God for each and every one of you. What a blessing it is to have the privilege to worship God here in the sanctuary. We're thankful for all of those that join us by way of our social media. We praise God and thank him for our officers and members that serve in ministry here at Greater St. Paul. Praise God and thank him for each and every one of you here in the sanctuary, those who are members at home, those that join us from far and distant places. We thank God for you and we celebrate your, your involvement in our service. Praise God and thank him for Sister Franklin. Would you give her a great big God bless you. Amen. To all my father's children, it's good to be here. I want to invite your attention to a passage of scripture recorded uh, in the book of James, the epistle of James. Uh, I want to invite you to the fourth chapter of James. Uh, and while you turn and prepare to stand, I just want to say publicly before you and before everybody watching that it is just wrong for a preacher to preach so hard and t try to take my place while I'm sitting there watching him. While I'm sitting there, I'm looking at him. Uh, amen. And Reverend Smith, boy, didn't he preach last week? Reverend Smith, come on, give him, give him a great big God bless you. Amen. I was trying to wave to him, let him know that I was here, that I was here, the church ain't vacant. Uh, he preached us a wonderful message last week, and we thank God for him. Here we are in James chapter 4, solicit your prayers and invite your participation. I want to begin reading at verse 13, and of course I want to refer throughout this morning's message to James' entire chapter here, uh, entire fourth chapter, beginning at verse 13, James says, go now ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell, get gains, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. The word of God for the people of God. And from these few passages and for a few moments, I want to use for a sermon title, running out of time. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk about running out of time. Time, time, you know, is a strange thing. Time is. It is a strange thing. Um, did you know that no matter how rich you are or how poor you may be, that you only get 24 hours in each day? Did you know that the man that traveled out of space the other day in the rocket, the man that, that went up, the very rich, spent millions to go out of space, he only gets 24 hours in a day. And then the poorest person that, that can't even put bread on the table, they, they get 24 hours in a day. Isn't that right? Time is a strange thing. It's something that you can't outrun, but you can run out of. I want to talk about running out of time. I was reminded in preparation of the late, and I call him great, Senator Elijah Cummings in his first stand on the Capitol floor. Uh, he made this speech, and in the speech he said this little poem. I know you know it. He says, I only have a minute, 60 seconds in it, 
forced upon me. I did not choose it, but I know that I must use it. Give account if I abuse it. Suffer if I lose it. Only a little tiny minute, but eternity is wrapped up in it. I want to talk this morning, my brothers and sisters, about running out of time. Me, we often take time for granted. And that's what James is talking about in this text. How dare you say, I'm going to do this or that on tomorrow. When you don't even know if you'll see tomorrow. That's the essence of what James is saying here in this fourth chapter. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the great floods and devastation in Europe. And the repeated fires in California. They, they say it's, it's the byproduct of global warming. warming. Well, may, maybe so. But even if so, it means that we are running out of time. <laughs> Violence in the streets up north. And the virus running rampant here down south both violence and virus are on the rise. It could be that we're running out of time. Uh, hostility is on the horizon and hate poisons the atmosphere. I'm just thinking of a few things that should bother us and make, make sure, make it, let it be known that these things are clear indications that we're running out of time. Don't you know that yesterday, this time, you had a little longer to be live on this earth than you have right now? That's evidence that we're running out of time. Here, my brothers and sisters in the Bible, James, the brother of Jesus, has spent most of his life, at the point of his writing this text, he has spent most of his life denying, doubting, and disbelieving that Jesus is the Christ. Let me say that again. James, the biological brother of Jesus, by the time he writes this text, he has already spent most of his life denying, doubting, and disbelieving that Jesus is the Christ. How many of us today can identify with Brother James in that we've spent too much time doubting, disbelieving, and denying the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The truth is we've spent far too much time running around, running away, and running against the will of God and the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you say amen? So many of us, we, we, have, we have spent too much time running around as adulterers. Not necessarily cheating on one another, but cheating on God. Come here, I got Bible. Hosea chapter 4, God said to Hosea, tell them I have controversy against them. In other words, God was saying to tell the people I'm upset with them. Why are you upset, God? God says I'm upset because there's no truth in the land. God said I'm, I'm upset because the people, my people, are spending all of their time swearing and, and lying, stealing and killing, being adulterous against me, God. They, they've spent time running around as adulterers. But not only that, they've spent too much time running away as abandoners. Can I give you another scripture? Revelations, Jesus says in Revelations chapter 2, he says, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. 
How many will be real today and they say that I have not spent time with God that I should spend? I said, I love him. I fell down, asked him to come in and be Lord of my life. And then I found myself running away like Jonah, running away from the will of God. Jesus said, I have some, somewhat against you because you have left your first love. We've abandoned, abandoned the teachings of Jesus. In that we don't love our neighbors as we should. I wish I had about one witness right there. We spend too much time, my brothers and sisters, abandoning the commandments of God. We, we, we don't give so that God can give unto us. Malachi say we rob God. We, we run away. We abandon God and tithe and offering. We abandon the witness of the Lord and that many times we find ourselves not walking worthy of the vocation wherewith God has called us. So we not only, my brothers and sisters, run around as adulterers, but we run away as abandoners. But not only that, here it is, we run against him as adversaries. We run against God. Can you imagine that? The record is that if you don't openly own Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then you're against him. If you're not for him, you're against him. He said, if you deny me before your brothers, I'll deny you. Well, we, we treat the Lord Jesus as adversaries. I'm mindful now there in the upper room when Jesus had his chosen 12 disciples at the table. His testimony then was that one of you will abandon me. One of you will deny me. They, they questioned themselves, Lord, is it I? You, you know the story. Jesus says, not only that, you will betray me. Jesus, Judas had already made up his mind. That he was going to go and sell Jesus. He sits there at the table with him, but he's really sitting against him. I wonder you're going to pray with me this morning. Here, here, my brothers and sisters, many of the followers of Jesus Christ are at times adversaries and enemies of the Lord. And while we spend time running, we are running out of time. Chapter 4 here, James, James does something quite peculiar here. In chapter 4, as he opens the chapter, he opens with the focus on wars. He says, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Oh, my brothers and sisters, we now live in a, war, a world that is saturated with war. There's some, as I look around here this morning, there's some can remember the wars on the battlefields of Vietnam. And at the end of that, we thought we could stop fighting for a while. We turned right around and got into conflict in the wars against Iraq. We finished Iraq, we turned right around, got in, in battle again in Afghanistan. We're, we're living in a world, in an environment where there's wars and rumors of wars. I wonder, have I got a witness this morning? Not, not only is there wars on the battlefields, my brothers and sisters, but there's wars in the business world. Have I got a witness here? That there, is, there is a perpetual dog-eat-dog -dog drama going on in the business world. Watch, watch this, watch, watch this. You find Nike is against Adidas. Walmart is against Target. CVS against Wal Walgreen. <laughs> McDonald's against Burger King. In the business world, my brothers and sisters, there is the dog-eat-dog -dog mentality. Big, large businesses want to squash and destroy small business. Why? Because there's war in the business community. 
I, I'm moving through the text. So give me just a minute because I got to pause to talk about these wars in our political institutions. We're supposed to be a democracy, and democracy is supposed to be the greatest form of government known to mankind. But look at our democracy. Democrats against Republicans. Conservative against liberals. Moderates against extremists. Powerful, wealthy people against those humongous populations of indigenous people. We are in a political system that is permeated with war. Not only is the political system corrupted with war, but the corporate world uh, is corrupted by war. Those that climb the ladder of success, those who step on the hands and stand on the shoulders of others as they make their way to the corporate top, find themselves against the common folk, the unskilled folk, or the low-skilled folk, the uneducated or the undereducated. They are their enemies. They're, they're war in the corporate world. So that when the corporate executives and the corporate workers leave their homes, they find themselves going to neighborhoods where there's war in the neighborhood. I'm coming down your street in just a minute. This side of the track don't like that side of the track. Families that live up the street can't get along with families that live down the street. I wonder how you're going to pray with me this morning. There's wars all around us. People that live in houses, watch this, think they're better than people that live in apartments. And people that live in apartments can't stand people that are homeowners. And neither apartment dwellers nor homeowners can't stand the homeless. We are we're living in a, war that's feel, a world that's filled with war. war. War in the neighborhood, and not only in the neighborhood, but war is in the local homes. War in the families. You, you know what I'm talking about. This brother can't stand that brother. This side of the family is better than that side of the family. These cousins disown those cousins. I wish I had two or three witnesses in here that know what I'm talking about. Child, I told her she was too good for him in the beginning. <laughs> Whoa. Family wars. Fighting within their own family. Watch this, and then they bring all of that to church. All of those spirits. All of those demons. All of those attitudes. All of those positions. All of those scars, all of those situations, all of those circumstances, all of that hate, they bundle it up and bring it to church. James says, from whence cometh these wars? Where, where does all of this fighting come from? And many of us, my brothers and sisters, already know the answer. And if you ain't quite sure the answer, all you have to do is watch Color Purple. <laughs> watch, watch, watch Oprah say, I, I, I had to fight all my life, Harpo. I, I wonder if I got a witness. To, is there anybody here that can say that? My, that's my testimony. And if that's you, my brothers and sisters, if you feel like you've been fighting all your life, if you feel like you've been fighting for far too long, the Bible has an answer for you. James writes it right here. He says in verse 8, draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. I'm sure that you know by now that that word nigh simply means close. James is saying, get close to God, and God will get close to you. Listen what James says. James says he will lift up those that humble themselves in his sight. Oh, my brothers and sisters, one of the hardest things for us to do is to learn how to be humble. I wonder, have I got a witness? I, I said one of, the, one of the most difficult things, don't, don't let us get two or three outfits in the closet. <laughs> don't mess around and get where you can go down there and buy a car and pay notes. 
<laughs> that means you probably ain't got a hoop to you. You got something that you paying notes on. And once you get to that status in life, the hardest thing it seems to be to do is to be humble. James says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Many of us know today, my brothers and sisters, that God will fight your battles. Have I got a witness in the church? God will fight your battles. And if we know that God will fight our battles, why do we spend so much time fighting against one another? That's what James is saying. Where does all of these wars come from? Why is it that this member can't get along with that member? The choir don't like the ushers. You know what I'm talking about. We bring all of that mess in the church. Uh, James has an answer. He says that's demonic. And I tell you what you need to do. You need to learn how to resist the devil. And he will flee. Can anybody testify right there? Resist the devil. Can you say for sure that I've tried it, I've trusted it, and I know it to be true? Can you sing the song, uh, uh, Jesus, be a fence all around me? And if you be a fence around me, Jesus, I can lay down my weapon and let you fight the battle. Uh, here, here, my brothers and sisters, those that draw nigh to God, James will say, in the way of duty, those that draw nigh to God will find that God will draw, draw nigh to them in a way of mercy. In other words, when you trust the Lord, God will show you just how sure you can be when you learn to put your trust in him. Uh, in, this, in this uncertain world, it, it is wise to draw nigh to God in faith. If you have faith, that's a wonderful thing. But faith that is untried, faith that is not trusted, is not mature faith. That if you really have faith, why don't you drop your weapon and trust God? Say, Lord, I need you to be, I'm tired of fighting. Lay my weapon down and let you fight my battle. Draw nigh to God in trust. Do you trust him today? Oh, my brothers and sisters, we were running out of time. Let's not play religious games. Not, let's not sit in the sanctuary and act sanctimonious. The question is, do you trust him? Draw nigh to God in your commitment. Get, get close to God in your commitment to God. Stop talking about God and start living for God. Show yourself and show the world that you love him. I wish I had somebody praying with me this morning. I'm, I'm about to be through draw nigh to God in obedience. And God will draw nigh unto you. In this uncertain world, it's a good thing, my brothers and sisters. It's a good idea. To draw close to God. I, I feel confident. I feel, I feel pretty good uh, that I've taken the COVID shot. But my trust ain't in that shot. My trust is in the Lord. I love it when the choir sings that song. I will trust in the Lord. Oh, my brothers and sisters, somebody ought to say this morning, it just makes good sense to get close to God. I mean, you may, you may be close to your family members, and that's a wonderful thing. But, but my brothers and sisters, you ought to be close. You ought to get close. Get closer and co every morning on your knees, getting close to God. Every evening before you lay down to go to sleep, get close to have a little talk with Jesus. Here, here my brothers and sisters, as James brings the discussion in chapter 4 to a close. That's where our focus verses are. They, they are they're focused there on the close of chapter 4. James has warned us of pride in verse 8. 
he warns us against criticism in verse 11. He says, speak not evil of one another. He warns us against arrogance. That's what he's saying here in verse 13. He says, go to now. You that say tomorrow or today I'll do so. That, that phrase, go to now, simply means go on, get away from here. With that, talking about what you're going to do on tomorrow. He says, go to now. And the truth is, my brothers and sisters, many of us sometimes spend too much time making big plans for the future and not taking care of the issues of today. James says, go to now. The truth is, we pull out our calendars and we mark our calendars and we plan to do this and, and to do that. We fill in this day at this time. We fill in this, this month, this week. I'll be out. We, we fill in our calendars. We mark this holiday and that holiday. We make we make all of these plans. We schedule these meetings and those meetings. And we do it without ever considering or consulting or contemplating what God has planned for us. That's all I'm trying to tell you. That James says, be careful today of how of how you make your plans. And so this morning, my brothers and my sisters, Lisa, keep you too long. I, I want to remind you that God has a plan. Can I get a witness here? I want to tell you that God has a plan. Are you praying with me? I want to, I want to, I want I want to inform somebody that God has a plan. And while we are making plans for tomorrow, God, he told me to tell you, yes, to be careful in your plan because we are running out of time. That's all I came to say today is that James said you don't know what shall be on the morrow. Are you praying with me? I don't know what tomorrow may bring. Lord Jesus, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But James said, he told me to tell you that what we ought to do is say, Lord willing, if tomorrow comes, that's all, that's all I have today. If the Lord will, ain't God all right? I'm learning to say, if the Lord, if the Lord will, how many of us can remember back in the day when Big Mama and Paw Paw would say to their neighbors, good evening, and I see you on the morrow, if the Lord will. I wish I had a witness there. Somebody knows that back in the day, the seniors, they would say, I'm going here and there. If the Lord will, can I get a witness here? The seniors would say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that if the Lord will. If the Lord, 
if the Lord will, uh, if, if some of us, some of us still say it. You, you can stay on your feet. I'm hollering some more. <laughs> that is, if the Lord will. <laughs> We still say it today, but here, here's what we do. We, we shrunk it down. We just say, Lord willing. Have I got a witness here? Lord willing. There's one thing that I want you to get out of this message this morning before leaving the sanctuary. There's one thing that we better get right. That is that we're running out of time and we gotta learn how to lean and depend on God yes sir tell the Lord I'm going where you want me to go I'm doing what you want me to do I'm trusting in the Lord here's the clothes here's the clothes I'll see you tomorrow if the Lord will and the creek don't rise. God bless you this morning. My brothers and sisters, come on, stand with me today. Stand, stand with me this morning. I, I, I just, I want us to take serious what we are too commonly taking for granted. And I'm not blaming anybody. We as a country, we as a nation, we as a people, I think humanity worldwide just grown so stubbornly against the God that we too often leave him out of our plans, leave him out of our considerations, leave him out of our thoughts, we too often go day by day taking God for granted. I'm convinced that as I learn to say the Lord will, that strengthens my dependence on the Lord's plan. My brothers and sisters, as we invite you to Calvary's cross, where redemption is purchased, as we do that, I, I want to simply remind you that we can't do anything without the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You can't, you can't accomplish nothing without the Lord. And then this, this seems to be such a negative toned message because I've pointed out a lot of our shortcomings. But oh, my brothers and sisters, there's another side of that negativity is the positiveness of placing your trust in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I've been able to weather storms that without my faith in Jesus, I know I would never have been able to make it through. I've come to realize, my brothers and sisters, that God has a plan for me. And that's what I want you to know. God, God has a plan for us. And no matter what's going on in the news cycles or in the society, God's plan will come to fruition. That's why I can smile sometimes through pain and, and disgrace. When, that's why sometimes I can hold my head up when I know that my name is being run down. I, I can just hold on because I know that God has a plan for me. How many know that? Let's, let me see your hand. If you know that God has a plan for you, he plans to bless you. God has a plan to lift you up. God has a plan to strengthen you. God has a plan to deliver you. God has a plan to give you the victory, to make you the head and not the tail. I'm standing on the promises of God and rejoicing because God has a plan for me. And finally, yes, I, I too, I'm running out of time. But I know this one thing, that when the hands of clock stand still, 
when the sands of time seep out of the hourglass of my life when the, my tongue cleaves to the rules of my, my mouth and when I lay down to get up no more that when time ends on this side because of what Jesus has done on Calvary's cross because he died for my sins and got up for my salvation when time ends here I'll lift up my eyes on the other side and eternity I, I will enter in to be with the Lord God forevermore God bless you today and may God keep you is my prayer for you I want you to now celebrate uh, this music ministry as you take your seats. Come on, give them a great big hand clap of praise.
everybody right, come on, let's sing that verse. I will treat everybody right. Come on, sing it with me. Clap of praise. Come on, y'all. Thank you, Brother Lewis. Give Brother Lewis some love this morning. God bless you. You know you got to give the drummer some. Come on, give it up for William Penny. Bless God. And would you be so kind to help me bless and thank Sister Cheryl Hamilton. Come on, give her a great big God bless you. Yes, sir. What a day. What a privilege it is to worship God. Come on, we're going to stand all over the sanctuary. Stand all over the sanctuary. Thank you so much. Hope that you have been blessed by today's worship service. and uh, Amen. And that you are drawing closer to God. Before we go down from this holy place, uh, Sister Marshall, Sister Gwen Marshall has misplaced her keys. You, you found them? Got them, got them. All right. Robert, Robert came to the rescue, Robert. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Thank you. All is well then. Before we, uh, before we give the benediction, let me say, just as we give the benediction, if there's anybody uh, that's here today that has not received the COVID vaccination, don't, don't mean to pick on you or anything, but we're going to give the benediction and ask you to those who are not vaccinated, if you'd be so kind to go ahead and leave the sanctuary first, and, and then we'll tear it for just a moment, and then we will all leave the sanctuary together. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presence and your prayers. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless your heads bowed together. Great and gracious God. We pray today, God, that our worship has been pleasing in your sight. God, we thank you for our fellowship, for all that make up this, this assembly, God, this coming together. Thank you for our preacher, Evan Smith, Lord God, for his humble spirit and for his willingness to step in and be used by you. Thank you today, God, for the privilege of worship. And we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts have been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Gracious God, now as we prepare to go down from this holy place, dismiss us from this service, but never from your presence. For now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide here now and forevermore. And oh gracious God, if I have failed to mention any, please Lord God, don't fail to let it be known that we appreciate everybody. We love you. We go down in your grace. In Jesus' name, every heart said amen. Come on, say amen. God bless you. God bless you.